Hello, I'm the Amazing Atheist, and welcome back to another video. I don't really know how I'm welcoming you back since you just got here. Maybe I'm welcoming you back to my channel, but how do I know you just arrived? For all I know, you could have been binge watching me for the last four and a half hours. Oh well, at any rate, welcome back. As some of you know, I believe morality is ultimately subjective, but before we get into that, I'd just like to say something ironic and self-defeating like, let's watch some videos and criticize other people's subjective assessments of morality. If you're scratching your head right now like, uh, what's going on? I don't understand what's happening. <sighs> uh, I have enacted a slightly modified version of my role in the 168th edition of the webcomic Red Panels. You'll notice that the artist represents my moobs particularly well, but he just couldn't quite capture accurately the pallor of my skin. Anyway, like all good comic book artists, uh, his work doesn't stand on its own, because that would be uh, fucking passe. Instead, it's got three dense paragraphs of text to help you understand the message. Why didn't Bill Watterson ever think of that, huh? So let's take a look at what Mr. Panel, I mean, I'll call him that since I don't know his real name, uh, has written here. It's curious that for the host of a podcast where they do nothing but offer criticism of the absurd views of other people, the Amazing Atheist believes the realm of morality to be subjective. Despite negating the value of his own critique, the show approaches its 300th episode. The basis for much of their reasoning, as was pointed out by show guest Milo Yiannopoulos, is their anecdotal experience and emotional responses to personal injustices. First of all, if you're going to mention the drunken peasants, please do so by name. The drunken peasants and the Amazing Atheist are two entirely separate intellectual properties, and you're conflating them both right out of the gate. Milo Yiannopoulos's criticism of us being too anecdotal was mainly levied at co-host Paul's ego. Interestingly, in the wake of that episode, many viewers pointed out instances where Milo was being anecdotal, such as when he defended the priest who molested him as a young boy because it wasn't damaging in his experience. Milo also failed to realize that anecdotal evidence actually can be used to defeat absolutes. For instance, if someone says, all X's support Y, all you need is one example of an X opposing Y to prove that statement false. But we're really distracting ourselves from the biggest problem with this opening paragraph, aside from the fact that it exists to speak for a comic strip that should be able to speak for itself. The biggest problem here is, what is the connection between subjective morality and anecdotal evidence? Now, I'm not saying that no such relationship exists or that no argument can be made there. I'm just saying that you haven't exactly connected the dots, Mr. Panel. Maybe you connect them in paragraph two. Let's take a look. Here's a suggestion, TJ. Perhaps morality ought to mirror the objectivity of another mental construction, mathematics. That is, it should be universalizable and internally consistent, lacking a logically sound reason to ascribe people, moral agents, any quantifiably greater magnitude of moral authority they would be not be differentiated as such. It would be illogical and immoral for people to delegate moral agency to others that they do not innately possess. Example, it would not follow that even though I do not personally have the moral agency to stop you from smoking marijuana, I could somehow empower law enforcement to prevent you on my behalf. Taking this logic to its extreme, we'd arrive at the realization of libertarian anarchism. Well, here's my suggestion, Mr. Panel. Perhaps language uh, choices ought to be discernible and concepts under discussion ought to be judiciously assembled so as not to confound the assemblage with a glut of makeshift jargon designed primarily to advance a message of ideological purity as opposed to effectively communicating a point of contention. In essence, shut up your yammering face unless you're actually going to fucking say something! As far as I can tell, you think morality should be treated like math. Well, here's the problem. 2 plus 2 equals 4, and you can show that in a number of different ways. And it's true in almost any circumstance. The exceptions are things like 2 drops of water plus 2 drops of water may end up just being one, albeit bigger, drop of water. But 2 carrots and 2 carrots is 4 carrots. 2 tits and 2 tits is 4 tits. I'm talking about the birds, not the breasts. Don't be perverted. It's nice and clean, and it's easy and measurable. There is no morality arithmetic. Is it right or wrong to spank children? Is it right or wrong to get an abortion? Is it right or wrong to allow euthanasia? Is it right or wrong to kill a murderer? You may have your answers to these questions, and so may I, but there is no universal agreement, and there is no simple equation we can all defer to and say, well, we figured out the morality of abortion. We've looked at every single factor, and we know 100% 
where human life truly gains its sentience and deserves its own rights. You know, the funny thing about everyone who claims to have objective morality is that none of them can agree on what it is. Oh, we found it. We found objective morality, you guys. There it was. It was behind the dildo chest the whole time. You know, things that are objectively true are genuinely not a source of much argument. Now, there are exceptions like uh, evolution or climate change, where people deny science based on faith and fantasy, but for the most part, objective reality speaks for itself. Two plus two is objectively four. Everyone comprehending what I'm saying in this video right now is objectively a human being because no other life form that we know of is capable. If I chop off my balls and throw them in a blender, they are objectively gone forever. But whether or not it's right to get your baby circumcised, there's no objective answer to that. Only opinions, only different value systems in competition with one another. In fact, you can find objective mor moral people on both sides of the issue. It's objectively wrong to mutilate that poor baby. It's barbaric. Well, it's objectively wrong not to mutilate that baby. It's God's will, or it's tradition, or girls like them that way, or this will help with disease, or whatever reasoning they give. All right, now we're getting too ver verbose here. Let's just get to your final fucking paragraph. How about that? As I suspect that you'd find the notion of true libertarianism to be too emotionally unsettling, at least legitimize your absurd subjectivism by living up to it. As a liberal, I'm sure you believe there ought to be some monetary redistribution of an arbitrary percentage of people's income to benefit the poor. Instead of waiting for a socialist utopia to do it for you, live by your morals and redistribute the same percentage of your wealth today. After all, it is important enough for you to compel others to do it. Surely it is important enough for you to compel yourself to do it before the law requires it. Well, if you're asking me to give to charity, I already do. In fact, I would like to urge everyone watching this to help me reach the $200,000 goal on my Extraordinary People Daring to Actually Help Women campaign. While Anita Sarkeesian was able to beat us to the $200,000 mark due to some big donors, we've shown her that we care more about real women than she ever will. The link is down below. We've raised $120,000 and we've got $80,000 left to go. I give a good portion of my income to charity, but our country needs more than a simple infusion of capital in the lower ends of the economic strata. We need a revitalization of infrastructure, education, environmental protection, and several other key factors. I'm not going to get into a libertarianism versus liberalism debate with you, especially since that is on no level addressed in your stupid fucking comic. But I will say that the solutions that this country needs need to be on a massive scale. One person acting on their own isn't going to make the difference. We we need to change the way we do things as a society, as a whole. If you want some objectively valid reason why we need to do that, I can't give you one. I don't think there's an objectively valid reason why this species even deserves to exist. Yet I'm glad we do so, and I hope we continue to do so. I'm the Amazing Atheist. Objective morality is bullshit. Peace the fuck out. If you enjoy this channel, subscribe to it. Now. Do it. Damn right, I'm sweaty. This fucking room's hot as shit. <laughs>